Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel Asli Analytics. Today let's try to solve one more interesting uh, SQL question. So the question is, given a table which contains order ID, customer ID, purchase date and amount, can you find the list of customers who have reduced sales in any transaction during a specific time frame? So that time frame is Jan of 2024. So what do we want is, we need to list all those customers whose transaction have reduced. So in any of the let's say for customer id 1 right so it has three transactions in this month take what do they want is in case there is a reduction in any of the transaction as compared to the previous transaction so for customer id 1 this is the first transaction where it has made 100 uh, rupees of amount right the second transaction is increasing it is 150 which is greater than 100 and the third transaction is 200 which is again greater than 150 so what they are saying is if there are those cases where customers have reduced their sales amount in any of the transactions okay so in any of the subsequent transactions if there is anything which has been reduced you need to flag those customers so for this particular case we find out that if you see this particular row right where the customer id2 has done the second transaction and the second transaction value is 150 while the first transaction value was 300 so this 300 and 150 it is a reduction right so it has reduced from the first transaction to the second transaction while in the third transaction, it has again improved, right? So from 150, it has gone on to 160, right? So this is again an improvement. So the only edge case that gets flagged is this row, if you see. So this customer ID 2 should ideally be flagged off, right? That's that's the question, if you understand this clearly, okay? Now, the way I can proceed on is, um, is all I need to think is about how do I break this problem? So the first part was, it requires either lead or lag, right? So if you can think about lag if i can get the previous amount right previous amount for that particular customer id okay if i can get that if i can create that column then what i need to do next is probably create one difference right if i can difference between amount and the previous sales amount then i can know whether it was an increment or a decrement and that is what we are actually looking out for so let's try to get into the step one so step one is nothing what we try to do is we try to use a lag function we partition by customer id we order by purchase date and we say that this is the previous amount so if you see this is the previous amount now the interesting thing here that we need to focus on is that for the first row for the first transaction we know that there is nothing above the first transaction id or the first order date right so it will the lag function will give you a null value so you will have to think when you will subtract you know how do you subtract something from null you can't do that so you have to think about that edge case for the second row we know you have 150 you know the previous sales amount so you know it is 100 right you get this for 200 you get 150 fair enough so previous amount gives you this previous date amount that was made for a transaction and this is a very important uh, column that we will need it so this particular query will help you in creating this column now as i am seeing right the next step is if i could kind of subtract the current amount and the previous amount if i can do that then i will be able to tell you whether this transaction is increasing or decreasing so for that right i need to tackle this null value and to tackle null value i have to use a colase function here for lag function that i am using right i can use a zero i can replace this null with a zero and this will work because it will ensure that the first row that you have the first transaction that you have right it is always positive it is always increasing right because there is nothing to compare so you can take care of that particular edge case or you could filter out the null rows you could also do that that will also work anything can work in this particular case the interesting thing is if you are using lead as a function here then zero will not work you can't replace it with zero because you will now be uh, tackling null in the last uh, order date right so you have to think about how you handle that i'll probably create one more video for that but that's the only thing that you have to think about. Now, so let's say we use lag. So from lag, we can use colase, we can get this zero. Fair enough, right? Now the next part is pretty simple. All I can do is I can create a flag in reality. Uh, you don't even need to create this flag filter. I am just doing it for the sake of you all to understand it, it pretty clearly, right? So all I do is I have my amount, I have the sales amount, I have the previous amount, right? I can simply subtract these two and get a flag so wherever current amount minus previous amount is greater than zero, then I can call that as a zero flag. 
and wherever this amount is uh, less than uh, zero, right? I can uh, flag that as uh, one flag. Okay, so I can create a zero one flag, and that will probably help me in filtering this further rows, right? In reality, uh, I don't even need to create this flag. I can simply use it in a where clause, and that will work out for me. So if you see, the next part could be I can simply uh, I've created this flag, and from this flag I can simply use uh, where flag is equal to one, and I can uh, use a distinct customer ID because there could be multiple transactions within customer ID two which could have been flagged one and one. Okay, so you handle that edge case also. As I'm saying, you don't even need to create this flag filter. And also the way I've written flag is just for you to understand, right? Because previous amount is created in the select clause. So ideally it is a copy of this entire collage statement that should be a part of this previous amount. Just for you to understand how this flag can be created. In reality, you don't need to create where flag is equal to one. You can ideally create this entire case condition. So where amount minus previous amount is greater than zero, you can simply uh, flag that also, okay? Uh, so you can use that and that can be flagged, something around that. 